Hello, Reader Pops. I am, I think, the last person to this video. And it was one that I was so excited to make. But then I started watching everyone else's and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna say the same exact thing as every video you've already watched. So I'm gonna start with my first summer book recommendations that I think are the least talked about so that maybe they're new to you. And then I'm just gonna talk about my favorites in general. If you don't already have enough motivation to read these books, then you definitely should after watching this video because reading in the summer is the best thing ever. Book one, I literally just finished this last night and and I think it is the prettiest book I think I've ever seen in my entire life. I say that every time I talk about this book. That is Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. This is actually an updated cover. They had a different one a little bit ago and then they changed it to this, but this is a literary fiction. So kind of out of my comfort zone and it's a coming of age story set in the 1970s. And you're getting the first person perspective of a 14 year old girl who starts to nanny at this other person's house and her household versus the household that she nannies in are two completely different worlds. And as as a child coming of age that can be super eye-opening and confusing. This is a very character-based book, so it's not very plot-driven, but you're just, the enjoyment is in experiencing the characters, which I love. Every character in here you will have strong feelings about. You will either love them with your whole heart or you will absolutely despise them and their values. So the house that she's nannying at, there is a psychiatrist as the father and he starts to take care of this very famous couple who the rock star is kind of a recovering drug addict and he's trying to stay sober in this house and then the wife is this super famous actress and the 14 year old girl, Mary Jane, is taking care of this little five year old girl who was the cutest character ever. This book literally made me want to babysit a five-year-old like it was she was so cute and you just kind of experience with mary jane as she discovers how different people are in the world and you're also set in the 1970s so we have these very specific gender roles of like wives cooking meals and taking care of the kids and some racism going on like just all of these different topics kind of sprinkled in there and explored and it was just so good the first day that i picked it up i read like the first 200 pages because it just flowed super nicely and i've seen people recommend this if you like daisy jones and the six which i wouldn't say that these books are similar but i do understand the vibe being similar because of the 70s and because of this kind of like coming of age narrating voice. I highly recommend this. I gave it five stars. I think it should be more hyped up. So then this one is garnering some hype, but so far it seems like I'm the one who loves it the most out of everyone I've seen read it. And that is The Roughest Draft by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. They're actually a married co-authoring duo, which is very funny because this is a romance book, although it's kind of written like literary fiction, which I think is why I liked it so much because it kind of had a more thought provoking narrating style, I feel like. This is a book by co-authors about co-authors who wrote this super famous best-selling book and then there was a falling out between them. Nobody knows why. They have a contract that says that they still need to write one more book. So they are forced to stay in this house together in Florida to complete this book. So we've got like this enemies to lovers type of thing. We have the then now perspective and you're trying to figure out why they don't like each other anymore, which is like a super huge theme in so many books right now, but it was done super well in this and the explanation was great. It's super angsty. It's super tension building and they are just very believable characters. And I feel like I do understand why people compare this to Beach Read because something about the character building and them being authors and them being like away at this different beach house, I felt the same vibes. I know what they're talking about when they make that comparison. So I also highly recommend this book five stars for me. Okay, here's the book that I just randomly found by going to the young adult section at Barnes & Noble, and that is 99 Days by Katie Cotugno. This author just released a new book called Birds of California, I think. So if you've seen that book, that's the same author. My favorite books are when you're in the mind of a girl who goes to a beach house, and that's what kind of, well, is she going to a beach house? She's going back to this town that she kind of got shunned out of because she had this weird relationship going on with these two brothers, and it gets kind of exposed that some cheating things happened, something of the sort. Honestly, the details of what happened are kind of fuzzy in my brain at this point. It's split up by days. So I love that format of just like day one in the town. And I loved watching her kind of reconnect with her friends and have to right her wrongs in the town. But then you're also watching her go through this weird love triangle thing again with the two brothers. I am just a sucker for summer romances. And I really liked the narrator's voice because I don't know, the cheating thing in books is interesting because a lot of people criticize characters in fiction books. But I feel like that is one of the most interesting places to explore how people are morally corrupt. Like I think the most interesting way to explore that is in a fiction book because it's not real and the stakes are literally non-existent because it's not real. So I don't mind that. I understand not wanting to read it if they like cheat on, the, cause then it's not romantic obviously. And you're like not rooting for them. 
but that's not really what this one is like. It's more of like an exploration into her brain and like what's going on with her being shunned by everyone in the town and how there's miscommunications and how the brother was also involved in this cheating thing, but she's the only one getting blamed. And the setting was super summery and she goes on runs. I love when characters go on runs and have morning routines. I've talked about this before. It's very strange, but yeah, this one was four stars for me, but I would highly recommend reading it by the beach or at the ocean or whatever, wherever you are. Okay, next, this is kind of a little oddball, but this is Dial A for Aunties by Jessie Q Sutanto. I have heard this described as a cozy mystery because basically she goes on a date and accidentally kills the guy. And so you're like, wait, what? There's murder? But it's super lighthearted and it's a comedy. It's just a super lighthearted, funny book, which doesn't seem like it would pair with murder. But she's got her four Asian aunts helping her cover up this murder at this wedding venue that they're doing. And then she actually is rekindling a romance, kind of a second chance romance as well because she runs into her ex at this wedding. So she's like trying to juggle covering this murder while also rekindling with her ex. And it's just funny because the aunties have these exuberant personalities and it's just a fun, lighthearted, but also page turning read, which I think is perfect for laying by the pool. For every book, I can say that. If you are going to California or a beach, you need to read this. This is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I got the weird large print version. It's, the text is huge, but I remember trying to get this book right when it came out and it was like sold out everywhere. But this is a literary fiction and it goes over 24 hours in Malibu and you're following Nina, who is the oldest sibling out of, how many of them are there? You're following a group of siblings, but from Nina's perspective, well actually this book gives like literally everybody's POV. By the end of the book, I was like, this is too many POVs, but their father is famous. So all these people are kind of like wealthy and in the celebrity world and they're in Malibu and you're just watching the 24 hours as she prepares for this like crazy huge party that's gonna happen at the end of the night. But it's really an exploration into sibling dynamics and her being the mom of the household because of their broken parent situation. But the absolute vibes of Malibu in this book are great. Every time I even visit Malibu, I think about this book. So I highly recommend, although I wish I could go back into this experience knowing that it was a literary fiction book because at first I thought it'd be a romance. It's not that. And then I thought it was gonna be like a, a plot that builds up to this climax and it builds up to like a family drama climax, but it's not like a mystery surrounding what's gonna happen to the family. So don't go into it thinking that either. It's really, you really just have to go into it knowing that it's just a literary fiction book that is very well written about family dynamics and they're all rich and live in Malibu, which makes it very fun. So yeah. Okay, I quickly must just like flash this on screen real quick. The summer I turned pretty serious because this show comes out like this Friday, I think, which might be the day that I'm posting this video. So I think it comes out on Amazon Prime. I am so excited to watch it come to the big screen. This is a young adult series so it's so easy to read like if you are trying to get back into reading for the first time these are the easiest books ever the first one is like 274 pages and she goes to the summer beach house and it's a love triangle between two brothers and there's just drama fun juicy stuff to be reading about so I highly recommend it the summer vibes are just amazing especially especially in the first book. And then you can watch the show at night after your whole day at the beach. How fun would that be? I kind of want to do that. Okay, next is another absolute five stars for me. The Summer of Broken Rules by K.L. Walther. Whenever I find out that people, some people like didn't absolutely love this book, it does confuse me because this is Visco Summer into a book and I am still obsessed with, like I will never grow out of loving a Visco Summer, okay? It's just, I, can't describe. It makes me happy. And this book made me so happy because the cover is so pretty and it's just so fun because, well, the only not fun part is she is dealing with some grief. There is that, but I didn't find it too heavy and I don't think it like took away. Like, I don't think you would be super sad reading this by the beach or anything, but they go to Martha's Vineyard for a wedding. The whole family plays a game of assassin and she starts this little alliance with the groom's best man. I don't know, someone on the groom's side. And they start a little alliance. They start meeting up. They start going on adventures together and romance ensues. Five stars. Okay, next we have Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. This is set in Italy and it's a romance, but it's also a mystery, which is why I love this because I'm really starting to realize that my favorite movies and books are mysteries with a little bit of romance in them. I love movies like that as well. And this was such a lovely surprise because I thought it was made for like 12 year olds, but it's not. If you are 12 though, highly recommend. It is young adult. Oh, also speaking of like spice scenes or open closed door romances, the only book so far that I've talked about that has any of that is The Roughest Draft. I think there's like a scene and it's not as descriptive as I've seen other books get, but there is that. And that's the, I think there's like one thing in Malibu Rising too, but it's pretty brief. But yeah, this one's young adult, so there's not any of that. And I had so much fun reading this. And if you're going to Europe, I would bring this with you. And then I liked this one less, but I still liked 
the vibes and that is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. There's a trope in here that was like used in a way that I really didn't like at the end. So it's like the last 50 pages. So if you want good and fun Paris vibes for like the most of the book and someone who loves movies, she loves movies in this book, then I would read this. I think I gave that book three stars though, just so you know. But when I give a book three stars, it doesn't mean it's bad. Like I still would recommend some three star books because I had a good time for the right setting. You know what I mean? Okay, and then if you want some like thrillers to read because that can be really fun in the summer too. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson is a five star series for me. And then we've got Good Girl, Bad Blood and As Good As Dead. And the romance subplot in this book, I think is one of my favorites. It, I mean, my all time subplot of romance is probably The Cruel Prince, but this is a extremely close second. I wish we could have a romance book from the romance that happens in this because it's just, I don't know what it is about it, but it's so good. And this is also Young Adult. And then One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. This is actually set during the school year. So it's not like necessarily summer vibes. It's just, if you want a thriller, this is a why, or not a thriller, a murder mystery. And I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. It's not you know, this one is like my all time favorite. But if you already read that, then this is a similar pick. And the last mystery, I don't know if this is thriller. I think it's just mystery is the last thing he told me by Laura Dave. Some of this book is actually set in Austin. So that was really trippy to read about. And when I picked up this book, I literally cleared off my entire schedule to just read it in one setting because it's just one of those where you need to know what happens because her husband just mysteriously goes missing with like one clue. And then you watch her try to uncover what the freak happened. And it's also a relationship between a stepmom and a stepdaughter and the character growth that happens there. So those are all my recommendations, but just really quickly on my kind of summer TBR, probably very soon I'm gonna read Float by Kate Marchant. And this was actually published by Wattpad. So I'm very curious about this. This is a young adult book and she goes to Florida to stay with her aunt. And I think it's like a boy next door type romance from there. So that sounds very cute. I wanna read a Mary Kay Andrews book because I've heard that these are murder mysteries with subplots of romance, but the only thing is they're in third person perspective. And I've also heard that some of her books are slow, but some of them are really good. So I bought The Newcomer. Ever since hearing those reviews, I've been honestly avoiding this because I'm scared. I don't wanna be put into a reading slump. I've heard that like some of her books are super good. So let me know if you've read this one. And then lastly, one that I haven't seen nearly anything about is I Thought You Said This Would Work by Anne Garvin. And this is a road trip book. And I really want to read about a road trip to see if I like those in books. We will see. I think this is more of a literary fiction about rekindling friendships and yeah, I'm not really sure. So we'll find out. Let me know what's on your summer TBR or your absolute favorite summer book that I need to read. And I am vlogging my living alone experience if you want to watch that on my main channel. And I also do like reading challenges on my main channel. Or you can keep up with me day to day on my Instagram stories and occasionally on TikTok. So I'll see you guys somewhere else on the internet and I hope you enjoy your summer. Bye!